Yeah, hello everyone. Um, this is Jeff, and uh, I am so uh, excited to join the Airflow Summit. And actually, this is my first time to join the Airflow Summit, and uh, uh, I have I'm so excited that I have the opportunity to share my experience uh, on the uh, Airflow. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about the uh, two Apache project, one uh, the Airflow and the Zipping. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how many of you heard of Zeppelin. Actually, actually Zeppelin is a, a notebook which is designed for the big data uh, uh, data engineer. Yeah. So here's my agenda today. Um, first, I'd like to talk about uh, a little bit about the uh, Zeppelin. And the second, I'm going to talk about why we would like to combine Airflow plus Zeppelin and what it can solve, what kind of problem it can be, it can solve. And finally, I, I'd like to uh, give you a demo to demonstrate uh, um, how Airflow and the Zipping work together and uh, just give you a, a, a very intuitive impression. Okay, first, uh, let me talk about uh, what is Zipping. So Zipping is a web-based notebook that enable data-driven interactive <laughs> data ethics and the collaborative documents with C2, Scala, Python, and more. And, and you, I, I think many of you have heard of Jupyter Notebook. And actually, Zipping is very similar as Jupyter Notebook. But um, Jupyter Notebook is very popular in the uh, machine learning area. And Zipping is more, much more popular in the big data area. For example, if you'd like to uh, develop a uh, Spark application or Flink or Hive Trino application, yeah, you would like to uh, use Zeppelin. I, and I, I believe that you would uh, <coughs> you would love to use Zeppelin, yeah. So this is a basic uh, architecture of Zeppelin. So there's three layers. The first, uh, the first layer on the left is the front end. And in the, uh, the second layer is the Zeppelin server, which is uh, which is actually which is a web server, and it can manage your uh, interpret your notebook. And uh, on the right side is the interpret part. So uh, Zeppelin server can work with many uh, big data engines uh, such as the Spark, um, Flink, Trino, Hive, and, and it yeah, so many. Uh, Big data engines are supported in in, in Zeppelin. So uh, yeah, I, I think this architecture is, is very similar as as uh, um, Jupyter. Yeah. So here's the uh, supported interpret. I just list a few of them, but you can see that most of them are uh, big data um, related, such as the Spark, Flink, and uh, in JDBC interpret, you can write Hive, Presto. And in the, in the language's perspective, you can write Scala code, Python code, R code, and SQL, of course, yeah. And of course, you can also write uh, share or Markdown for your, for uh, Markdown is for, for uh, your programs, for your coders documentation, yeah. So um, yeah, here's a, just a brief uh, comparison between the um, Zeppelin and the Jupyter, and uh, there's just four reasons why you need why you need to use Zeppelin uh, compared to Jupyter if you are using uh, in your big data area. So the first reason is that uh, Zeppelin has better support for uh, big data engine, and uh, um, it is. It's very easy to run a Spark job in Zeppelin with very few configuration. And uh, the second reason is the built-in visualization. So um, I think as many of the um, data engineer, um, many of them don't have backward uh, front end the uh, front end knowledge. So uh, I I, think, I believe that uh, um, a lot of um, data engineer don't like to write JavaScript code and they, but they have the requirement of visualization. So the built-in visualization capability of Zipping can help you uh, visualize your data. The third reason is the easy configuration. Yeah, it, it is pretty easy to config your uh, spa job or fling job or hive job in Zipping. Uh, the, the four, 
the last reason is the self container So zipping is the self contained uh, framework or, or platform that you don't need to uh, install any extra uh, uh, dependency or things. And if you are using if you are using Jupyter, you you will know that if you would like to run um, on spa job, you need to depend on other stuff such as the, you need to uh, install a, a spa kernel or you need maybe you need to uh, depend on the Libby server. Libby is the uh, uh, is a, a, a job server for the for the Spark. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Now let's go to the second part. The second part is the yeah. This is the most important thing I would like to talk today. So this is about why we would like to uh, suggest you to use Airflow plus Zipping. So um. First, let, let's see a, a problem. So the problem is that how we would like to move our spa job to production. So we all know that Airflow has a lot of operators. And here, here we have two um, Spark operators. One is the Spark SQL operator, and the second is the Spark Summit operator. And you, you can see that in the Spark SQL operator, we have to launch our SQL in the Spark SQL operator. And besides that, we also need to do a uh, configuration for our uh, SPA job, like the master, the execute calls, execute uh, memory. Yes, yeah, this is the, uh, these are job configuration. And it is the same for the uh, SPA summit operator. You also need to uh, uh, specify the, 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 the Python script, and also you need to specify the job configuration. So, in these two operators, you can see that you write the you write your Spark code, Spark job code in Airflow, but we all know that Airflow is a orchestration tool. It is not for the development, right? So it should, uh, we all know that Airflow is good at job orchestration, but it is not good for the um, job development. If you if you'd like to develop your Spark job. Actually, you need to uh, rely on other tools or platforms. So here is the um, here is the uh, workflow uh, that how you would move your spa job to production. So typically, you would like to develop your spa job in some other tools. Maybe it is uh, maybe it is a command line, or maybe you write your code in in in, in IDE and you. And you submit, uh, and it is then you pack pack uh, package your job and uh, submit in in some gateway machine, yeah. And then if you would like to move it to the uh, to production, I mean you would like to schedule it regularly, then you have to do the second step, the orange step. Yeah, the copy your code into the uh, Spark SQL operator uh, or the Spark Summit operator, and yeah, copy code and configuration. Yeah, then you you will run your spa job in Airflow. Yeah, so typically this is the uh, four steps for uh, how to move your spa job from the development stage to the production stage. So um, here and this workflow, I think, yeah, this workflow works, works, but it has problems. So here I list two major problems. The first problem is that. The second step is error pro and in inefficient. We all know that copy code, we have to manually copy code and configuration, right? But we all know that the people, uh, people usually would make, make mistake. So you, you usually, it is very possible that you didn't copy it, copy the code and configuration correctly. Yeah. So second issue is that the environment in the development stage is Different from that in the production stage, because you develop uh, your job in uh, outside airflow, and uh, so, but the, the production environment is, is in the airflow, so there will be some difference between them, and usually this difference may cause your job fail in in the production stage. Okay, so um, yeah. Uh, Yes, yeah, so, so this is the uh, um, airflow work 
the architecture of airflow work. We know that if in the airflow work side, we will run different operators, right? The Python operator, the bash operator, sparse image operator, sparse secure operator. And uh, usually you have to, the, the, the operator uh, need to do in current architecture of airflow. Some of the in some of the operators, you need to do uh, several things. For example, you need to specify how to uh, launch your uh, task, how where to launch your task. I mean, uh, the where to launch task means whether you would like to launch it locally or in Kubernetes or in young environments. And uh, also, besides that, for some operators, you also need to specify the job configuration and job code. Yeah, but. In my humble opinion, I don't think the uh, airflow operator should do such kind of things. I think the airflow operator should just need to, uh, yes, just need to uh, run your job, but it shouldn't include any job-related context like the job configuration and job code. So this is what we would like to suggest uh, combine the airflow plus the uh, zipping. So this, we introduce a zipping operator. So this is a centralized operator. So all the all the uh, all the job, all the jobs, all the tasks rely on this operator. And this operator will call zipping. And zipping will since zipping supports different different of uh, interpreters. So Zipping will Zipping is responsible for running different kinds of jobs, like the Python Python interpreter uh, runs the Python job, Flink interpreter runs the Flink job, Spa interpreter runs the uh, Spa job. Yeah. So um. So we we didn't put the uh, job configuration, job code, where to launch task, how to launch task in the in, in the uh, sibling operator. We move that into the sibling side, yeah. So here is the uh, overall architecture uh, between the production and the development. We, you can see that on the, on the right side, on the right side is the development uh, environment. We see that all the development is done in the sibling side. Yeah, you can write, you can uh, debug your code in the sibling side for different kinds of, of, of tasks. And uh, if you would like to move, when you have finished your development in the sibling side and you would like to move that to the production uh, stage, you have you just need to um, write the uh, sibling operator and the sibling operator can specify which node you would like to run. So here is uh, yeah. So this this kind of architecture can make sure that the development environment and the production environment is consistent. Here, because here we see that uh, we run our job in Zipling in development stage, and uh, even in the production stage, we also run our job in the Zipling side, right? Okay. Now let's see the uh. Yeah, here is the example of the zipping operator. Uh, yeah, actually, this is very uh, simple. You just need to uh, task ID. We of course we need to specify and the connection ID. The connection ID means the uh, it is just the uh, con airflow connection which specifies the zipping uh, zipping address. Yeah, and note ID. The note ID is the uh, every every notebook in zipping has a, a unique ID. Uh, here the note ID is is point to the um to the note that that you would like to run, and the version version number means that um uh but, but actually actually the version as uh, a featured country is not supported yet, but we would like to support it in uh, in future because um we all know that um once we release our job. Uh, once we release our um, spa job in in the airflow, sometimes we will uh, find that maybe there's some bugs or issues, and we would like to uh, update our job. But 
since we uh, the production environment and the stage uh, and the developing environment are both in the uh, sibling side and uh, when we update our code in the uh, sibling side we don't want it to affect the production code right so so here we can specify the uh, version uh, so that even we change code on the sibling side it won't affect the, the production uh, side because they are in different uh, branch, right? Okay, yeah, the last uh, last step is about the demo. Yeah, let me show you the demo. Uh, yeah, so so let me first uh, give you a brief introduction of, of, of the uh, sibling. So here, this is the sibling. And uh, let me show you how to config for example, if you like to configure your Spark, yeah, you can configure your Spark Home, the Spark Master, any Spark configuration you can specify it here, yeah. And uh, yeah, here's some example of the uh, notebook. Let me show you, um, for example, here's a Spark SQL um, example. Yeah, you can write the Markdown uh, and you can here, you just write the uh, Python code and you can run the Python code, yeah. Okay, yeah, so this is the, uh, and let, let me show you. Uh, yeah, here is the built in visualization. Yeah, you, so you you don't need to launch any uh, uh, visualization code. Yeah, you, it, it, uh, and you can visualize your data uh, easily in the inside, like the bar charge, pie charge, error charge, and the line charge, and the uh, scat charge. Yeah. Okay, now let's go to the uh, airflow side. Yeah, here is the DAG. Yeah, you can example DAG. Let's check the code first. Yeah. So here, this is a very simple uh, DAG. It has three tasks, and the first task is the uh, the first task is the uh, Python task. It's just uh, run a Python node, and uh, uh, this is the note ID. Yeah, you just need to specify the note ID. And this is a Spark, uh, Spark job, and this is a PySpark job. Yeah, and here is the uh, dependency between them. So the so, so ID here is means the, uh, yeah, this is uh, just uh, here's the ID. Yeah, the, yeah, you can see the, the ID in the UI, right? Yeah. So you just need to first develop your code here. And uh, after you finish your development and you want to move to the airflow, just write this kind of simple uh, simple DAG and uh, then just make it and then enable your DAG, then you can run your uh, yeah, run your job here. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, and you can see see the logs here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the output. If you you see any if you if your notebook uh, fail too long, you can see all the error here. Yeah, and also it will bring uh, also uh, specify. Also, it will output some context like the job URL. If if you would like to deep dive uh, what's wrong there, you can click the link here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, this is pretty much about the demo. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, uh, the first, uh, last is that I'd like to mention some future work. The first is the uh, Git integration. Second is the uh, Kubernetes support. Uh, so we would like to that you don't need to specify where to launch your job in the airflow side. You just, all, all these things can be controlled on the sibling side. And uh, so you can develop your, develop your job in Kubernetes environment and uh, move that to the um, production uh, environment uh, also why uh, Kubernetes, yeah. Just keep keep the development and uh, production uh, environment consistent. The second, uh, the, the third thing is the HA support. So uh, since we, all the job is dedicated to the sibling, right? So it's a single point of fear. So we would like to support the HA support. And the last is that uh, integrate with other modern data stacks such as the great expectation. So you can do the uh, data quality check in the sibling side as well. 
And uh, yeah, here's some useful links that's for your reference. And uh, the last link is a uh, um, demo. Is uh, it is uh, it is done by the doc composer. You can run the demo. I just show you. Uh, um, yeah, I just I just show you. Them. So you can preach 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 in your local environment. Yeah. Okay. So thank you everyone. Yeah.